Good day everyone! First and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Marin Hernandez from BS Development Block 3201. And I'm here today to talk about the Elaboration Likelihood Model, generally known as the ELM. And I'd also like to share some of my thoughts and criticisms about this, but first, I'd like you to choose between the two images on the screen. Which phone are you most likely to purchase? Or which one of these appeals to you the most? So if you've already made your choice, please do remember which phone you choose because at the end of this video, I'll reveal something you may not have realized before. So what are we waiting for? Let us discover its connection to our topic for today. So let's start with a quick overview of this elaboration likelihood model. In the 1970s and 1980s, Richard Petty and John Cashapo created this elaboration likelihood model. Unfortunately, previous persuasion research had shown conflicting results. So, Pitt and Kashapu develop a theory to better explain how and why people might be persuaded to change their minds about a particular message. That's why they came up with this and proposed two roots of persuasion that is based on their prior research findings. Perhaps some of you are not aware of this theory, but it's actually happening in real lives. They seek to explain how such persuasive arguments influence, form, and reinforce our attitudes. So, what does elaboration mean in the context of this model? According to this concept, when confronted with a persuasive message, people display either high or low elaboration. Like for example, if someone gives you an information, this is where some kind of elaboration occurs in you. In this context, elaboration is your effort that causes you to examine, remember, accept, or even reject the message. So when a person has higher levels of elaboration, they are more likely to carefully consider and issue a message. When they have lower levels, they make less cons carefully considered decisions. And since this model illustrates how people can be persuaded to change their attitudes, this elaboration likelihood model of persuasion become known as a model of advertising and marketing communication that discusses persuasion level of messages put out in such advertisements. For example, when you watch television and see advertisements, the message presented to you are designed to persuade you and modify your behavior. As a result of this ad campaign, different attitudes are being formed and changed towards you. Furthermore, this theory also shows that persuasion happens in two ways, which are the two roots of persuasion, the central root of persuasion and the peripheral root of persuasion. When we say central route of persuasion, it has something to do with the duration or the number of times a message is shown to an audience, as well as the message persuasiveness or the level of persuasiveness in that message. Audience is also engaged and active, and this audience is more likely to change his or her behavior if that content being shown is directly related, relevant, and close to them. It attracts the audience's attention through facts, arguments, credibility, and knowledge. Meanwhile, the peripheral root of persuasion is being convinced by fame and popularity rather than facts. It is deceptive and based primarily on attractiveness. It's not elaborated upon or it has a low elaboration. The audience here is very passive that they employ mental shortcuts or peripheral cues that apply on the low effort basis. So let me offer you an example scenario to help you grasp these two groups. Assume you are a marketing executive tasked to promote a new brand of soap. And you decide to use the elaboration likelihood model to create a marketing strategy. And you choose between the central or peripheral processing routes. So first, you must be particular to your target audience. So let's assume that you choose to construct a campaign or add a target central route processor. So those people considering a soap via central route may be particularly concerned about the effectivity or whether the soap has any artificial elements. So you must design a set of commercials or internet landing pages to appeal to this type of consumers so you have to emphasize both the soap's unique formula which makes your body appear soft, white, and it's all natural, eco-friendly ingredients. So you must um, you must put some information and facts to make it credible for them. Then in order to target the peripheral processors, you must take a different approach. You need to collaborate with the celebrities and social media influencers to develop a series of advertising and social media posts that depict that these people or those social media influencers that you select is truly enjoying and being satisfied with the soap. And they will also be influenced if they witness those social influencers or those celebrity is truly using the soap that you are selling. But take note that you can use both routes in making your campaign or marketing strategy. 
Okay, for now, let's imagine a different scenario and point of view in which you are the target audience. So assume that you need to appoint a new barangay captain in your barangay. If you are affected by the central route, you will listen to what both leaders who have run for the office have to say before criticizing their abilities and capabilities and deciding whom you will vote for. However, if you are really swayed by peripheral influences, you may vote for the candidate who is more attractive, more famous, a friend of a friend, or who is supported by your family. So let's now start to criticize this elaboration likelihood model. And I want to share first the good thing about this model. It gives us advantage in a way that it provides us foundation for determining the best way to persuade our target audience in a particular campaign. It's also feasible to use both primary and peripheral routes of persuasion simultaneously. But when it comes to the bad sides of this model, I come to realize that this model does not tell us when to employ a particular kind of persuasion with the fact that we are just using one basis, which is the elaboration level of recipients to know which route we were going to use in our campaign. And I also disagree with the idea of this model that says that attitude which is developed through central route processing will be more stronger and more difficult to change than the peripheral one because I think this is not applicable to all situations because there are other existing factors that may affect this so may affect the attitude change for example when i used to buy a laptop i always look at the specifications but there are some time when my attitude changes immediately due to the existence of other factors like last time i bought my sister a new laptop and i choose based on her once she told me to buy something that's trendy which is similar to her classmates laptop that time, I not bought that laptop based on my preferences, though my attitude was as affected by, though my attitude was affected by the central route before. I also realized that there is no hint of how to persuade a low elaborator in the best possible method. Going back to our earlier example or scenario, seeing your favorite celebrity may pull you toward purchasing, but if you dislike the music and the theme of the ad, it may move you away from purchasing it. It indicates that even if the peripheral route of persuasion is taken, it cannot be guaranteed that it will persuade the target audience. There is also lack of empirical evidence, and the variables used are weakly tested. The cues of both routes are very limited. In short, it has unpredictable values and incomplete details, which leaves critical questions hangingly unexplained. But despite all of its flaws, I still consider ELM as a good model. Because I, what I like about this is that it focuses on understanding the circumstances using two routes. And I think this knowledge would be extremely helpful for those marketers, particularly in explaining and identifying the variety of consumers' behavior. It will also help us to establish marketing plans and choose relevant campaigns for a range of situations. And for me, this model also contributes in developmental communication since it provides us an idea on how to engage and persuade our target audience or the marginal sectors in the public through the use of our campaign. To the fact that these campaigns play a big part in the implementations of our developmental communication research. So, before I finish this video, I'd like to explain why I made you choose early which phone drew you in or attracts you the most. If the phone you choose is this, it means you're being persuaded by the central root effect, which leads you to look more closely at the specs and detailed information of this phone. If this is your preferred phone, you are subject to the peripheral root effect, which may have been influenced by your idol, Liza Zoverano. Hopefully, after watching this critic video, you were able to grasp the elaboration likelihood model and its two persuasion roots, and I hope you will be able to produce a good campaign or ads in the future using this model. Again, I'm Marian Hernandez and I hope to see you here again next time.